This is about converting 48 volt DC into or taking a tapping, a 12 volt tapping off a 48 volt DC battery bank. Same thing, converting 48 volts DC to 12 volts DC. Now if you imagine you've got a battery bank, um, let's, let's use these fuses as an example. If you've got four 12 volt batteries in series, you've got 48 volts. Well, you can take 12 volts just off, off that one, but the more current you take off that, the more discharged this one will be, and over time there becomes an imbalance. And in the older uh, uh, milk floats and stuff like that, where the lights were run on 12 volts off the battery bank, they used to have a switch, three-way switch, and every week the operator would flick the switch another turn, and it would put the lights onto a different set of batteries to try and get rid of this imbalance. So, what uh, we use 12 volts here to run the charge controller and also to run all the tracking circuitry and the solar tracking motors. So it's important that because it's happening all the time we don't get an imbalance in the battery pack. So this is a very simple low-tech way of doing it. Now you could use a regulator, but regulators get hot and going from 48 volts DC, and that's a nominal voltage, so when the batteries are fully charged it's more like 56 volts, taking them down to 13 volts, something like that, you're going to produce a lot of heat and it's susceptible to spikes and all sorts of things, so therefore spikes in the electricity that is, or over voltage, any of those, and you really can't see whether it's working or not. So this is a dead simple way of doing this. And it also means that you have a buffer in the system and a readily visible indicator to show you what's going on. So just before we zoom in, we've got 48 volts DC there, 12 volt battery bank, light bulb and various meters. So just to prove what's going on, stick this on 200 volts DC, hopefully you can see that, that's the positive. So we just go across this supply, 56 volts, batteries are well up, it's sunny day, it's charging well. So. Excuse this red wire, but that's the negative. So negative goes all the way through there onto the negative of the battery. Okay, there's the positive. Let's just sort some of these wires out. The positive goes down this white wire through the light bulb, which is a 240 volt, 150 watt incandescent bulb. Right, then it goes through the light bulb out to here, then through the meter and positive. Okay, so now we've got the meter set on DC amps, 10 amps. So we stick this on there. The light bulb glimmers and we're showing quarter of an amp, 0.24, which is near as damn it, quarter of an amp. Okay, so that can just trickle charge this battery ad infinitum, and it won't back feed because we're coming out of, well, 56 volts down to 12 or 13 volts. So it can just trickle away. In fact, the old tractor that I use for cutting firewood, as seen on one of my earlier videos, the batteries aren't brilliant on it, so therefore I have this very system just trickling the battery all the time. Quarter of an amp, it won't overcharge it, but it will keep it well charged. Now then, but what happens if we change the bulb? 
So that's 150 watt at 240 volts and we get quarter of an amp. So what have we got here? We've got a 110 volt bulb at 100 watts. See what happens? Half an amp. You know, you want a bit more current, half an amp. Yep. And then, that's a 110 volt bulb. Now this one is 60 watt at 50 volt bulb. So I'm guessing that will be about an amp. There we go. What have we got? 1.07. So 1.1 amps. So what we have effectively is a DC supply regulated through a resistance and you can change the charge rate which is quite good but the thing is you can see that it's working even with the 150 watt bulb you can see it glimmering so you can see it's working it's constantly feeding into the battery and then down in the battery shed what we have is the output of this battery which acts as a buffer then that goes to feed the charge controller and the circuit for the charge controller you can build it yourself circuit and the instructions are in the edition 2 of wind and solar and we've used it for this circuit for years and basically it's a comparator and a timer so you can set the comparator and it goes okay once you're above or below that voltage I want you to switch on it switches on and then the timer goes okay and you can preset this you go stay on for five minutes then switch off and if the voltage is still high switch back on and if it's not don't it's easy it's just like 20 or 30 bits couple of chips which you could just put in sockets very easy very cheap probably if you were to be exorbitant and buy really posh gear it would probably cost a tenner to build anyway so that runs that but also this battery then runs the timers for the uh, solar tracking and also the motors so let's say for instance the motor will come on it'll draw more current than quarter of an amp but it's only on for 20 seconds every half an hour so the battery then buffers that and you're not overcharging the battery um, trying to supply the current to run the motors for a short period of time so the, the battery discharges a little bit comes back up so this is very handy I say I use it to keep my tractor battery charged up any surplus batteries you have that are in good condition you can't just leave them on the shelf they go flat and lead acid batteries don't like it when they've gone very flat and they will self discharge so you just leave them on a trickle uh, I've got some downstairs they're on 100 watt 240 volt light bulbs just keeping the voltage up it's better than le letting them self discharge and in the end becoming scrap hopefully this has um, been informative and uh, get the book build yourself charge controller